Welcome. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. And uh, maybe we'll do this, we'll dedicate this lesson, Le'ilui Nishmato. Is it your uncle, Lauren? Yes, yeah, Sam Drelik. So we will do it, Le'ilui Nishmato, the, the elevation of his soul. Shimon Velvo, I think. Uh -huh. Okay. But Rachel, ben. I mean, Ben. Yes. Ben, yes. no, it's his father's name. Gosh, what is it? Hmm. I forget. Okay. That's okay. All right. So we're going to try and do it from here. So we're talking about laws of, of um, inheritance, right? So it talks, so the first would go to sons. And then the second would go, if he has no sons, then it would go to his daughters. And if he doesn't have a daughter, you shall give his inheritance to his brothers. And if he has no brothers, then it bounces back uh, to a previous generation. It says, and if he has no brothers, you shall give the, his, his inheritance, right, his property, to his father's brothers, to his uncles. And then so it go, go, bounces back a previous generation. Right, clearly we don't mention his father because he received his inheritance when his father passed away. Okay, so that's why it's going to any brothers that his father may have that ha may ha ha pre that his father predeceased. The im ein achim, but if there are no brothers la aviv for his father, unatatemet nachalato l'sheiro hakarov a love mishpachto vayarish oto. So here it becomes more general. It says, and if he has no brothers, that his father has no brothers, you shall give them that his inheritance l'sheiro hakarov. So this is to relatives, right? that are close to him, his nearest relatives from his family, by Yarash Ota, and whoever that is will inherit it. Israel, and it shall be for the children of Israel, the Chukat Mishpat, as a um a ordinance, right? Ka'asher Tziva Hashem et Moshe, just as God commanded Moses. So the language is interesting a little bit too here, but basic laws of inheritance according to the Torah. So, of course, Rashi needs to explain the she'eru ha'karov elav minishpachto, right? So in a sense, his his nearest kin from his family. And this is from the Sifre in Baba Batra, page 109. Ve'en mishpacha kruya ela mishpachat ha'av. And he says that when it uses the term mishpacha, it means only the father's side of the family, the father's family. So that's that's how it goes there. All right, let's keep going. Vayomer Hashem el Moshe, and Hashem said to Moshe, Ale el hal el har ha'avarim hazeh, go up to this Mount Avarim. Or a et haaretz and see the land, asher natati livne. It's got to be Israel, right? That I have given to the children of Israel. So it's interesting, right? We have these series of events that take place and that uh, that move to this particular moment. Ale al har haavarim. Go up to Mount Avarim, and in this is Bamid Bar Raba, the Midrash Raba. Lama nismecha lakan. Why does this particular section uh, is joined to the previous one? Why is it joined here? Kevan, the answer. Shamar hakadosh baruch The reason is that once or since the Holy One, blessed be He, 
uh, said, Natun titen lahem, when he said, you shall surely give it to them, and he was speaking to Moses, Amar otitzi vahamakom, Moses thought to himself, the, the, the ever-present has told me, has commanded me, lahanchil, to, to give the inheritance. Shema, maybe, hutra uh, hagzera, that edict has been terminated, has been literally means released, because what an edict does is it binds you to a certain path, to a certain behavior, and maybe that's been released. The ikanes la'aretz, and I shall go into the land. Amar lo hakadosh baruch the Holy One, blessed be He, said to him, Zerati bimkoma omedet. My edict stands in its place, hasn't changed. And this is from the Sifrei. Davar acher, another interpretation. Kevan shenichnas Moshe lenachalat bnei Gad uvnei reuvein. When, when, again, since Moses was part of, he was involved in the inheritance of the children of God and the children of Ruvain, Samach, he rejoiced, Amar, and he thought to himself, Kim Duma, or Kim Dume, it appears to me, Shehutarli uh, Nidari, right, that my vow has been, again, that I've been released of my vow. Mashal Lamelech, so this can be compared to a king, Shegazar Albano, who uh, commanded regarding his son, right? He made an edict regarding his son, Shelo Yikanes Lapetach Palatin, that he should not go into the entrance of his palace, Shelo, his palace. Nichnas Lashar, well, the son entered as far as the gate. Vahu Acharav, and uh, sorry, I think we're talking about here that the king went into the gate, Vahu Acharav, and the son followed him. Lechatzar to the courtyard, Vahu Acharav, and the uh, the the prince was following him. Letraklin to the entrance chamber. Triclinium, I think, is the Latin word. Vahu Acharav, and he was following him. The son was following him. Kevan lakiton, right? So then, the, since he came to go into the kiton, the, I imagine that has to be the main chamber, okay? Amar le, he said to him, Bni, my son, mikan ve'elech, from this point and on, ata asur likanes, you're forbidden to enter. Going on, back into the text. Vera'ita ota. So remember, God has just commanded Moses to go up onto this mountaintop and to view the land that he himself is not going to be able to enter, that Moses is not going to be able to enter. Vera'ita ota, and you will see it, you'll view it. Vene'esafta ela mechagam ata. And you too will be gathered to your people. Ka'asher ne'esaf Aaron ha'chicha, just as Aaron, your brother, was gathered to his people. Excuse me, one second. Okay. Ka'asher ne'esaf Aaron ha'chicha, just as Aaron, your brother, was gathered. Mikan, from this, we we can infer from this. That Moses longed for the same death as Aaron experienced. So that from this wording here, because obviously it doesn't necessary. We, we, it's not necessary. The se the section Kasher Nesaf Aaron Achicha could be left out, and we'd understand exactly on a basic level as to what's being communicated here. So what are these additional words coming to teach us what we just learned? Davar acher, another interpretation. Ein atatov mimena, menu. So it says another, another implication is you are no better than him. 
al asher lo kidashtem, since you did not sanctify, etc. Now, let's take a look. This sounds like, yes. All right. Uh, I think we need to go on. Let's just keep, let's see. I'm trying to see. I think, yeah. I think it just doesn't mention the uh, verse number. Let's go. Let's take a look. Let's take one more verse here. Ka'asher miritim, right? Um, as you rebelled, P, my mouth, you went against what I told you, the Midbar Tzin, in the wilderness of Tzin, the Merivat Haida, when the congregation uh, quarreled with you, Lahakti Sheni, in order to sanctify me, Bamayim, through the water, the Inahem, in their presence. Hey, my Merivat Kadesh Midbar Tzin. That is. Rabbi. Yes. I have a lot more Rashi on the previous verse. You no, know, it just seemed, we'll, and we'll do it. So we'll go back. It seemed to me that he was commenting on this next little piece, okay? Uh, but, uh, oh, okay, I see what Yeah, that's all, but I will go back to it. We will absolutely go back to it. And I actually <laughs> see where this particular verse is is uh, referenced by Rashi right here. So we'll we'll go back, we'll go back, right? Uh, those are the waters of Merivat Kadesh in the wilderness of Sin. So let's let's keep going now. All right. Asher lo kidashtem, in that you did not you did not sanctify me, because I don't you see I don't see that here. Okay. Ha im kidashtem, so we can infer from that. That had they sanctified God, Kidash Temoti, had you sanctified me, Adain Lohigias Manchem Lipater, it would not, your time would not have arrived to depart from the world, right? Bachomakom Shekatav Mitatam. Now we notice that in every place where their death, that is the death of Moses and Aaron, is mentioned, Katav Sir Chonam, he also writes, why? In other words, how how they acted improperly. The fish in al dor hamidbar, and the reason is that there was this edict, of course, that was uh, placed against the generation of the wilderness, lamut bamidbar, to die in the wilderness, ba'avon, in the iniquity, the the sin, shelohe aminu, that they did not believe in God. They did not believe God would help them conquer the land of Canaan. Lachach bikesh Moshe, and for this reason Moses requested sheikhtav sirchono that his particular uh, offense should be mentioned every time. Shelo yomru, that they should not say, people shouldn't say af hu min hamamrim haya, that he too was of those who uh, rebelled, that Moses was also one of those people who rebelled against God in, in terms of going into the land of Israel. Mashal, lishte nashim, and this can be compared to two women, she lukot bebeitin, that were uh, given stripes in a court. They were um, they were condemned to to be beaten, right? Achat kilkala, right? And one of them had acted, I believe this would mean immorally. Achat achla pagesh eat, And the other one had eaten, I believe, uh, seven year, is it figs, Lauren? It says um, unripe produce okay. on sabbatical. Okay. So, but the point, so, okay, thank you. And for the immoral behavior, in parentheses, it says adultery. Yeah, yeah, but it uses a euphemism here. It's right. Afkan, okay, bakomakom, and in this case, too, since they both were receiving essentially the same punishment, right? Bakomakom sheiskir mitatam. So it's interesting because uh, it says that, the, hmm, Mitatan would be their death. Okay, I don't think that eating, un, uh, you know, eating unripe fruit in the seventh year is a, is a, um, you know, no, 
fair. No, keep going. It doesn't say that that was oh, okay. the, the okay. Punishment. All right. So, so I think okay. His kir sirchonam. He mentions so this is referring to Moses and Aaron. Then he mentions their offense. Lohodia shelo haita bahem ela zu bilvad to let them know. No, so this is refer, re, referencing the women. Okay, to let it, it, it or, could reference either one. Really, what it says is yeah, but for I here it says whenever their death is mentioned, their sin is mentioned. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, and then it says okay. to tell you there they had no sin other than the, I mean no you know sin or sin right yes yeah, sin other than this sin alone so I mean that really could be true with with Moses and Aaron or with the women so I think it's trying to use the example of the women but to me it would make sense that when they were published publicly flogged because that's what the punishment was they were being flogged that's what it's saying right. She uh, Lukot, okay? Luka is to be flogged. So the point is that since both of them were to be flogged, uh, they didn't, they mentioned what they were being flogged for so that they wouldn't think of the woman who had, who had not, um, you know, committed adultery, that somehow she had committed adultery too. So that's, but, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I don't know if, were they both flogged to death? No, because then when but, it says their, because I, when it I, says death, it says when their death is mentioned, their sin is mentioned. I know it doesn't. It's I think there's either a misprint here or a miss. You know, it doesn't make sense. The Torah is very clear that that flogging is not supposed to cause death. That it tells you, you know, that you're allowed to give four up to forty stripes, thirty nine. Uh, two on the back and uh, one sit on the front, although with a woman that's different. Um, but regardless, they're not, uh, and I, I don't even know that that number is per permissible when flogging a woman, but the Torah itself is very clear that it says that your that your brother not be become despised in your eyes, that when you, when you uh, administer the flogging. So this is in another place in the Torah. At any rate, yeah. So I think, you know, mitatam, they're, they're sort of confusing a little bit, because in the case of Moses and Aaron, we really are talking about their death. But in the case of the women, we're talking about them getting flogged. And we're talking about the punishment, because the punishment for Moses and Aaron was that oh, they would die. I think they are talking about Moses and Aaron, because in mine, it said, it mentions the, um, the analogy of the women being flogged for the different sins. And then it says, dot, 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 here too, comma, whenever their death is mentioned, their sin is mentioned. So I think they are talking in that second part about Moses and Aaron's death. So I'll tell you why I don't think so. Because if we we're talking about Moses and Aaron, then the, suff the suffix here, the pronominal suffix, should be mm -hmm. M. It should say mitatam, which would be masculine. But the fact that it says... You're right. It says mitatan. Yes, it does. So it's okay. okay. You know, it, we, are, we are, what can I say? Laboring in the Torah. That's, that's the whole point. Okay. One more Rashi. Heim me merivat kadesh. Those are the waters of the... Um, Oh, Meriva, like murmuring, you know, that kind of thing of Kadesh. It says dispute. Dispute, thank you. I'm going to put that in. Thank you. Let's put that could in. It also, could it also be a reference to that they kept, that even when they came to die, this would be mentioned? Yeah. Yes, yes, never, absolutely. They never lived down this punishment. They served their time, but it was always mentioned. Yeah, but the, yeah, but it does say in the Rashi it does list the female ending. Yeah, I I think Judith is making well, a different point in a way, but maybe not. Maybe not. Well, when you're saying they they weren't they weren't flogged to death. No, absolutely but, not. Absolutely not. The yes. Death part comes in is that they kept mentioning it. That even when they died, that they had this transgression. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's what I said that, earlier. That's not, but that's not the sense of the Hebrew, okay? Because it says, in every place. 
So it apply, it definitely apply. And with Moses and Aaron, it's got to do with their punishment. That every time it's mentioned that they're not going to go into the land of Israel, they always mention because of the Mirivat Kadesh. And so likewise with the women, because both of them got the same punishment, uh, the one woman for sure would not want to be considered an adulterer. So that's why, even though both were given the same punishment, I think that's the point. Anyway, let me keep going, if I may. Heim levadan ein bahem avon acher. So it says, because it says heim, that is, the heim levadam, they alone ein bahem avon acher. They had no other iniquity. In other words, Moses and Aaron were not, were not to be accused of any other iniquitous behavior. Davar acher heim, this, this word heim being here, it's sort of emphatic. Shehimru b'mara, heim hayu shehimru b'yam suf. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, so here it's referring must be to the Israelites, right? The ones that... that um, Rashi, I mean, uh, um, yeah. here it says it's referring to the waters themselves. Oh, thank you. Can I read it with a parenthetical part? Sure. Sure. It says those waters in parentheses, mm. and then which instigated the rebellion back to parentheses of the Israelites. Yes. And then at Marah yes. were the same as those which caused the rebellion at the Red Sea. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Nice. I would not have realized that. Okay. Let me put this in for future reference. Thank you. Great. Yeah, because it says Haim May, right? Right? Uh let's see. Let's see, Haim May Merivat. So it's it's taking it that way. All right. Shaim Ruba Mara, the the one the, the waters where where they rebelled or disputed at Mara, Haim Hayu Shahim Ruba Yam Suf. There it is a little bit Force though, I, I must tell you. Uh suf, This doesn't make sense, Lauren. I have to say, this is you know, atzmam. They themselves shehimru that also rebelled. So I have to say that here it doesn't seem to be talking about the waters. It mm -hmm. seems to be talking about the Israelites. In other words, those same Israelites that rebelled at Mara were the same ones who rebelled at the Red Sea. You know, they also, uh, and, the, or, you know, I don't know if we want to use Himru. I mean, I think it means lot, lacked faith, I think is the way I'd want to understand it. In other words, the ones that lacked, lacked faith at Mara, they were the ones who lacked faith at the Red Sea. They also were the same ones who who lacked faith at Midbartzim. And it's referring yeah, to the, I, the I think yours makes more sense than Chabad's because yeah. how can waters provoke a, rebel, a rebellion anyway? Well, I can understand if it's saying they were the reason, right? They were the cause, uh, not in the sense that they caused it, but they were the 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 reason for it. But it doesn't make sense when it says Heim Atzmam, the the they themselves, the the waters themselves wouldn't have. Okay, the waters weren't rebelling. Unless it says, the, it says the waters instigated the rebellion. Yes, or unless, unless, as I'm trying or, to, or at on. one point caused it, but I don't understand how. So, um, hmm. <laughs> unless, and here, here's my really struggling with this is to say that because they weren't there, they didn't provide the Israelites with the water at the Red Sea. They represented a barrier. And also at Kadesh, again, the, the fact that they weren't there, it's as if the waters were refusing to, to in, the, in the two cases, to provide, you know, uh, liquid, liquid refreshment for the Israelites. And in the case of the Red Sea, they, they were rebelling against God by not parting. But I don't know of any Midrash that's, that suggests that. And it's the only sense that I can make out of it. I think your translation is better than Chabad's. It makes sense. Well, I, th I think it makes sense. At any rate, we're going to stop here. And let me just mark the place. Okay. So give me a moment to put in the little marker here. 
and we're in a new idea here. This is, as you can see, we're starting a new paragraph right there. So there we are. Okay, I'm going to stop the share and uh, we're going to stop the recording right here.